Welcome back to Stand with Kelly and Denali Chivaka. As promised, we have with us Representative Ben Carpenter, who is currently representing the Kenai Peninsula area, and he is running for Senate. Ben, thank you so much for being with us today. Hey, it's good to be with you both. I'm happy to announce to everybody that you have the endorsement of President Trump's campaign here in Alaska, and that is a really big deal in the Kenai Peninsula. So congratulations for having a voting record that has earned you that endorsement. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, I, I very much look forward to seeing a successful uh, campaign and uh, election for President Trump. I think the alternative is very dangerous for the state of Alaska. So um, absolutely, and I would make say a, this, make a good team. <laughs> I'd say the same is true about your election and the alternative, your opponent for the Kenai Peninsula, because we can see both of your records. You are what your record says you are, and fortunately, in this situation, we have two candidates who have two records and what they have done in Juneau. And so, I'd like to talk a little bit about your record, but I want to tee it up by saying one of the things that's interesting about your opponent, for those who don't know that is Senator Bjorkman. Senator Bjorkman has a record of lying to the citizens of the Kenai Peninsula. And so for those who haven't followed some of this story, I thought it was really interesting, this back and forth that happened with one of my good friends, Senator Mike Schauer, where Bjorkman went on KSRM with my friend Dwayne Bannock and claimed that he was doing one thing in Juneau for Kenai Peninsula. And then Bannock interviewed Shower and he said, no, Bjorkman did this and that on my bill to stall it and kill it. And then Bannock interviewed Bjorkman again and said, hey, man, did you lie? And Bjorkman adamantly denied no. And then he got Shower back on and Shower said, uh, that's exactly what Bjorkman did. And then Bjorkman went and threatened Shower in his office. And then Shower came back on the radio and said, this is what happened with Bjorkman. And so we have all this documented live on KSRM, Bjorkman actively lying to the Peninsula citizens, trying to convince them that he's one person in the Kenai Peninsula and he's doing something completely different in Juneau. And I see that happening in the campaign as well, that he's representing that he's one kind of politician and senator to the residents of the Kenai, but then he has a completely different voting record. He's voting, what did we find? Was it 95% of the time with the it's squad really leftist Forrest Dunbar yeah. it's insane and so I wanted to ask you Ben Carpenter what is your record in Juneau and talk straight with the people of the Kenai Peninsula well you know when I go door to door and, and I talk with folks the number one issue that everybody is talking about is our economy and how it's how it's suffering and, and next after that is basically the state budget and how we're spending too much and I have, for six years, I have um, promoted and, and tried to get uh, us, the uh, state legislature, to reduce spending in our in our state legislature. And we have grown our budgets. We've added 650 positions and about $600 million in pay and benefits for state workers. And all of that's on the back of the dividend. We don't have a growing economy. We don't have a growing tax base that supports the growth of government. And so... When somebody says, hey, we need these programs and we need all of these all of these good things that government can do, um, Bjorkman is not asking who pays for it. He knows who pays for it. He has voted twice at the dividend in order to pay for growth of government. And I'm adamantly opposed to that. I think that the best thing that we could do for permanent fund earnings is to spend it in our private sector economy and, and spend it in our, our small businesses. And if the state government needs to grow, if it wants to grow, and, and, and Alaskans and special interests want the state government to grow, then they ought to come to the people and ask for a tax, just like every other state and every other citizen does in the state or in the nation. So we're having a conversation down in Juneau about growing state government, and that's what is succeeding down in, in Juneau, because we don't have to come to ask for a tax, we just take more of the permanent fund earnings. And we don't have a constraint on our spending such that only only our, our finance division is telling us within a few years, maybe as, as little as three or four years, that permanent fund earnings will be completely consumed by state spending. And then we will have to ask the question, then what? Who pays then for additional space, state spending if it's, if it's just to pay for inflationary spending? Well, that means there's going to be some sort of tax. That it's the only option that we have because we will have consumed all of the permanent fund earnings. So... The stark difference between the two candidates is I am in favor of a long-term fiscal plan that reorders our um, spending and revenue priorities, institutes a spending limit, and pays a full statutory dividend, and then 
um, looks for additional revenue that that requires less from all Alaskans instead of taking all of the permanent fund dividend out of the private sector. That is that is a worst case scenario for our state, and that is where we're headed right now. And that's what you get with Senator Bjorkman. Yeah. No, I agree. So we've established that Bjorkman is a liar at this point. He loves lying to his constituents. He likes throwing up smoke screens so that he can keep getting reelected. I'm curious, Ben, what are some of the lies that he's been spreading about you during this race? Um, we know that that's a tactic that um, incumbents use a lot as they like to lie about the up and comer opposition to hold on to their seat. And I'm curious, what are some things that he's been spreading around and what's the truth of the matter? Well, thanks for the question. I, I, I kind of detest this type of politics and uh, um, I would much rather be talking about uh, constructive solutions for our state, but it is what it is. And I've got to address some, some lies. Um, one of the ones that I've heard people call me and say, Hey, Bjorkman was just at my door and he told me that you voted for an income tax. Well, that is a, a complete falsehood. He is, uh, Bjorkman is assuming and he's, he's, um, trusting that the voters are ignorant of um, procedures down in Juneau. Because what has happened down in Juneau is I voted uh, in the committee to move a bill out of committee with recommendations to not pass an income tax, but just move the bill out of committee. And he's he's saying, well, that that vote was for an income tax. Well, that's, that's just simply not true. The only time that we would be for an income tax or for a bill is when we vote for it on the floor. So I have never supported an income tax. I will never support an income tax. And to say otherwise is, is preying on the ignorance of voters to not know the difference. Right. A this process is, vote is, is um, not the same as a final I, I vote. And to be clear, no, it's not, it's when we analyzed his votes compared to Dunbar's, we only looked at final votes so that it would be a fair analysis. Yeah, that's right. The, the votes that matter are the ones that are taken on the floor that are actually going to enact policy. Moving bills uh, from one committee to the next is procedural. It's administrative. It's something that we're supposed to do. We're obligated by our rules to take action, to review a bill in committee, and then take action and move it on to the next committee. So it's an abuse of the of the system to say, well, I don't like this bill, so we're just not going to hear it and sit on it. That is that is commonly what happens down in in Juno, but that is that is um, an abuse of power, just like a, a binding caucus rule. Which we should talk about this. That's another thing that that really chafes me is is uh, the argument that that Bjorkman puts forward that um, there are some other Republicans down there, three Republicans that uh, didn't want to, they, they had different rules that they wanted to run by. And all he's meaning by that is this binding caucus rule, which basically says that at the beginning of the legislature, you agree to be in this in the majority caucus and to vote for whatever budget the finance committee kicks out of, out of budget or uh, out of the committee. Meaning he joined, he, he and eight other Republicans joined with nine Democrats and said, whatever budget finance gives us, that's the budget that I'm going to vote for. And he hasn't even seen it yet. This is, is this constitutionally, um, it's wrong constitutionally. And, and I'm, I'm not going to uh, take the easy, easy wrong over the hard right. That's a nice way of saying that. I think the other important point there for all of your constituents is your constituents, along with the rest of Alaska, elected a Republican majority in the Senate, and your opponent threw away that majority by choosing to give it to the Democrats and creating that what they would call a bipartisan caucus. But what they actually did is they put the Democrats in charge of committees and gave them the power to choose which legislation was written and supported and sponsored and made it through and passed. And that gave our Republican majority, because we have more Republicans in the Senate than we do Democrats. But because of the choice of Jesse Bjorkman, we now have Democrats in charge of the Senate in Juneau and not Republicans. So he threw away a Republican majority and Republican power because we had Republican majority in the House and Republican majority in the Senate and a Republican governor. The reason why we have Democrats leading in Alaska is because of Jesse Bjorkman. So one of the bills that we championed in the House, and as a member of Judiciary, House Judiciary, we passed 
this bill out, which was a um, clean up our voter rolls bill. And that bill made it out of the House, made it over to the Senate, and it got loaded up with a bunch of left-leaning um, um, wish lists from from their Judiciary Committee. Uh, one of them was um, same-day voter registration. And that bill made it back to the House for us, and we killed it. We killed the bill because we weren't going to allow the left through this um, these Republican members who empowered the left to, to um, further um, degrade our election integrity in the state. And you have to remember, too, and, and this is good to step back and take a 30,000-foot level, I was elected six years ago to the House following several years of a Muscox coalition where Republicans were joining with Democrats that's to empower uh, a left of center house. Well, that that election that, that brought me in, we changed out a third of the house members. In the following election, we changed out another third. We, the voters in Alaska. And that brought us to this current legislature where we had a re fi finally had a Republican-led, Republican majority in the house. Well, we've got the same problem in the Senate where you've got a handful of Republicans who would rather work with the Democrats. And I'll, I'll just be honest with you. The main reason why they're doing this is because the unions and the special interests at the state level are pushing for a return to a defined benefits uh, pension retirement system. And that is the, the big thing. That's the big elephant in the room that nobody's talking about in this election. But it is it is the, the thing that's going to be front and center of the next uh, next legislature is a return to this defined benefits. We're $6 billion um, in um, in the hole in the unfunded liability for the current defined benefits retirement system that we have, and adding to it is is unsustainable for our state government. That is what the, the um, public sector unions want so bad that they're willing to spend Tremendous amounts of money getting Bjorkman and others that are pro-union. Remember, Bjorkman's a member of the NEA. He, he stands to benefit from any sort of pension bill that gets um, passed, personally. And this is what they're pushing for. The, the, the hundreds of thousands of dollars that are being spent by unions, including outside dark money, to um, get pro-union people elected into the state legislature is for one reason, and one reason only return to a defined benefits retirement system. That's what's at stake. Let's pick up with that on the other side of this break. You're on stand with Kelly and Denali Chewbacca. We are talking to Ben Carpenter, current representative in the state house in Juneau. We'll be back right after this. Stand by. <laughs> 